B. Oster in use of electricity urges Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina inaugurating National Power and Energy Week 2018. Collection of secret reports of Pakistan security intelligence on Father of the Nation Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman to be published tomorrow. Communal polarization underway in name of national unity, leaving Awamilik aside, alleges Awamilik General Secretary Obaidul Qadir. Literacy rate of country rises to 72.9%, primary and mass education minister tells news conference. Suicide attacks on sports club kills 20 in Afghan capital, Kabul. And in soft football, Bangladesh beat Pakistan by solitary goals. Assalamu alaikum, this is Rifa Jahan welcoming you all to our news at 10 on BTV, BTV World and BTV Chattogram Center. Assalamu alaikum, I am Shuhid Hassan. You have just had the headlines, now on to the details. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina said the country's drawback in the power sector during BNP regime was unprecedented, which was not seen in any other part of the world. Bangladesh's total electricity generation capacity was 1600 megawatts when Awami League assumed power in 1996. The Premier said this while inaugurating National Power and Energy Week 2018 in the capital this morning. Most part of the country was plunging into darkness at the time and the government for the first time engaged the private sector to boost this sector. With the engagement of the private sector, she said the country's total power generation capacity rose to 4,300 megawatts in five years. But the generation capacity unprecedentedly came down to 3,200 megawatts in next five years tenure of BNP. The Prime Minister said production cost of every unit of electricity is around Taka 6.25, but the government is making it available to people at Taka 4.82. In future, the government might withdraw the subsidy when country's economy would get better, she said, urging the people to maintain austerity in using electricity. Reiterating Awam League's firm commitment to make the country self-reliant in power and energy, the Prime Minister said, our government has attached highest importance to regional cooperation in power sector with the construction of power plants and grid lines with neighboring countries as well as being state countries. State Minister for Power and Energy, Nusrul Hamid, was in the chair. The function was also addressed by Minister for Energy, Water, Resources and Irrigation of Nepal, Borshaman Punananta, Advisor to the Prime Minister, Dr. Tofik A. Elahi Chaudhry, Chairman of Parliamentary Standing Committee on Power and Energy, Mohammad Tajul Islam, Power Secretary, Dr. Ahmed Kaikaus, and Mineral Resources Division Secretary, Abu Hanna Rahmatul Munim. The Awami League Local Government Election Nomination Board in a meeting gave nominations to party men for participating in different local government elections. Prime Minister and Awami League President Sheikh Hasina, also chief of the nomination board, chaired the meeting, which was held at our official Ghana Bhavan residence in Dhaka today. Members of the Awami League Local Government Election Nomination Board were present at the meeting. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has rejected allegations of the BNP leaders of holding camera trial on Zia charitable trust case against Khaled Azia, saying it is being held in an open door court. The Prime Minister was addressing a meeting of the Central Working Committee of the ruling Awami League held at Ghana Bhavan this evening. Sheikh Hasina said BNP leaders and lawyers of Khaled Azia are making spurious and baseless allegations of holding camera trial as they do not have enough facts and documents to defend in the case. Realizing their possible failure in the court, she said senior lawyers of BNP leaders with their mentality of absconding from the case are raising questions about the court setup in the jail gate. 
The Prime Minister heavily came down against Khalid Azir for her arrogant remarks at the court saying, how a leader who has minimum respect and law of the country can make such comments. About the Gazette and the court in the jail, Sheikh Hasina said her government is not taking any step revengefully against Khalid Azir. Rather, she argued that such courts in jail and sub-jails were also set up during the case against Colonel Tahir, Bidyar Mutuni case, and later against herself in Khalida in 2007. The Prime Minister said Khalid Azir stole the money of the orphans and it is the real fact. Khalida and her lawyers do not want to appear in the court because they understand the consequence of the case for stealing money, she said. Sheikh Hasina said the reality is that Khalid Azia and her lawyers want to avoid the trial as they can realize the facts through their guilty mind. Referring to formation of a new political alliance by Dr. Kamal Hussain and Professor Dr. Bodhra Suzar Chaudhary, she welcomed such initiative and opined that there should be a strong alternative to Awami League. She, however, issued warning against making any research on Bangladesh's state power, saying her government would not allow anybody to bring crocodiles through digging canals. The Prime Minister laid emphasis on maintaining ongoing democratic trend and the pace of development, saying her party, Awami League, will have to return to power again in the next election to establish Bangladesh as a developed country. The publication ceremony of first edition of the book titled Secret Documents of Intelligence Branch on Father of the Nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, will be held tomorrow. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina will attend the ceremony as the chief guest at Gonabhavan at 4 p.m. Emeritus Professor Rafiqul Islam will chair the function while Bangla Academy Director General Samsu Zaman Khan will join it as discussant. Bangabandhu Memorial Trust is funding the publication of the book. The book will be published in 14 volumes. Pakistani intelligence branch used to make reports on Bangabandhu every day. On the basis of the reports, Bangabandhu was arrested and tortured many times without holding any trial. The then special branch compiled different documents on Bangabandhu from 1948 to 1971. The book will contain different information on the country's war of liberation and founding of Awami League, letters which were written to Bangabandhu by his party leaders, workers and relatives, and his speeches delivered by him at different meetings and public rallies. Newly elected parliament member from Khulna 4 constituency, Abdus Salam Moshedi, has taken oath. Speaker Dr. Shirin Charmin Chaudhary administered the oath at the Jatiya Shankshad Bhavan today. Secretary of the Parliament Secretariat, AEM Golam Kibria, conducted the swearing in ceremony. Among others, Weep Mohammad Shahbuddin, parliament members Mahbubar Rabegam Gini, and Khulna District Council Chairman Sheikh Harunur Rashid were present. Awami League General Secretary and Road Transport and Bridges Minister Obaidul Qadir has said the announcement of forging national unity without Awami League, the country's largest political party, is nothing but a farce. He said this at a meeting with leaders of Rajshahi city and district units of Awami League at the Awami League Central Office on Bangabandhu Avenue in the capital today. Awami League Organizing Secretary Khalid Mahmud Chaudhry, Office Secretary Dr. Abdul Sohan Golab, Cultural Affairs Secretary Asim Kumar Ukil, Deputy Office Secretary Barrister Biplav Borua, Rajshahi City Corporation Mayor AHM Khairuzaman Liton, and leaders of Rajshahi City and District Units of Awami League were present in the meeting. Obadul Kadir said, the election commission will announce the election schedule. It is not the task of the government or political parties. Only the prime minister has the authority to determine the size of the post time government, the minister added. Information Minister Hassanul Haq Inu has said refusing the court Begum Khaledazia is trying to keep alive the evil power of absence of trial. He said this while addressing a meeting with the leaders of Bangladesh Betar and Television Artists Association at the Secretariat today. Additional Secretary of the Information Ministry Abu Al Hussein chaired the meeting which was also attended by President of the Association Dr. Inamul Haq and General Secretary Saiful Azam Bashar. Hassan Al Haq Inu said the government has taken necessary initiatives for the welfare of artists.
Primary and Mass Education Minister Mustafiz Rahman has said now the literacy rate in the country is 72.9% which is 0.6 higher than previous year. The minister said this at a press briefing at his secretariat office today marking International Literacy Day on 8th September. The minister said to remove illiteracy from the country the Bureau of Non-Formal Education is implementing a basic education project among the 45 lakh illiterate people of the 15 to 45 aged group. Besides, the decision of introducing primary education up to class 8 is under scrutiny, said the minister, adding that it will be implemented after finalizing all the works and scrutiny. Now, international news. Twin bombings at a sports club in the Afghan capital Kabul yesterday killed at least 20 people and wounded 70 others. Two journalists were among the dead. The first explosion was triggered by a suicide bomber and was followed by a car bomb shortly after, said Interior Ministry spokesman. No immediate claim of responsibility was made for the blast at Daste Barshi, home of many members of the mainly Shia Muslim Hazara ethnic minority. Japan's northern island of Hokkaido has been hit by a powerful earthquake triggering landslides that engulfed houses. At least eight people have been killed and about 40 are missing, say local media reports. The tremor struck 62 kilometers southeast of the regional capital Sapporo in the early hours of the morning. No tsunami risk was issued, the country's meteorological agency said. The magnitude 6.7 quake cut power to around 3 million homes after a thermal power plant was damaged that effectively cut off occupied East Jerusalem from the rest of the West Bank. Khan al ahmar is situated a few kilometers from Jerusalem between the two major illegal Israeli settlements, Malay Odomim and Kafar Odomim, which was the Israeli government's wants to expand. The removal of the Bedouin village enables the Israeli government to cut the West Bank into two. A five-member delegation of Denmark, led by its acting ambassador in Bangladesh, Rafika Haider, met the LGRDN Cooperative Minister Khandukar Musharraf Hussain at the Secretariat in Dhaka today. Rural Development and Cooperative Division Secretary S.M. Gulam Farooq, Chief Executive Officer of Arla Foods, Peter Tuborg, Managing Director Peter Holberg, Corporate Chief Jalal Khalid, Commerce Advisor of Danish Embassy, Jacob Kahi Zepsen and senior officials of the ministry were present on the occasion. The LGRD minister apprised the delegation about Ekti Bari Ekti Khamar or One House One Farm project adopted for poverty alleviation. The Danish delegation expressed keen interest to invest in agro farm management, especially in cattle farming in Bangladesh. A charge sheet was submitted before a Dhaka court against six persons including owner of the killer passenger bus in the case regarding deaths of two college students in a road accident in the capital's airport road on July 29. The five other charge sheeted accused in the case are driver of Jabal Nur Mohammad Masum Billah, his helper Inayat Hussain, driver of another bus taking part in the race, Mohammad Zubair Shuman, his helper Asad Ghazi, and owner of another bus, Mohammad Jahangir Alam. Of the accused, Masum, Masum Billah, Inayat Hussain, Shahadat Hussain, and Zubair Shuman are now in jails, while two others have been shown fugitives. On 29 July, two students of Shohid Ramizuddin Cantonment College, Abdul Karim Aliyas Rajibuddin, 18, a student of class 12, and Dia Khanum Neem, 17, an 11th grader, were run over during a mad race between two buses of Jabal and Rupuri Bohon on Dhaka's airport road. Dia's father, Jahangir Hussein Fakir, filed a case with Cantonment Police Station to this end. And now, news on weather.
The well-marked low over Northwest Bay and adjoining area intensified into a monsoon depression and now lies over Northwest Bay of Bengal and adjoining West Bengal and Bangladesh coast and was centered at 9 a.m. today. It is likely to move in a northwesterly direction and may cross West Bengal coast by evening or night today. Under its influence, steep pressure gradient persists over North Bay and adjoining area. Maximum sustained wind speed within 44 kilometers of the depression center is about 40 km per hour, rising to 50 km per hour in gusts or squalls. Sea will remain moderate near the depression center. Squally weather is likely to affect the maritime ports, North Bay and adjoining coastal areas of Bangladesh. Maritime ports of Chattogram, Cox's Bazar, Mongla and Paira have been advised to keep hoisted local cautionary signal number 3. I repeat, signal number 3. All fishing boats and trawlers over North Bay have been advised to remain close to the coast and proceed with caution till further notice. They are also advised not to venture into the deep sea. Now news and sports. Bangladesh almost assured a semi-final berth in their Seven Nations Sub Cup with a 1-0 goal victory against Pakistan in a hard-fought Group A match under floodlight and amid huge cheers from some 18,000 crowd at Bangabondo National Stadium today. Veteran defender Topo Bormon scored the match winner for Bangladesh by a close-range cool header that kissed the Pakistani net through the right corner. With the feat, Bangladesh topped the group list with all-win record, securing full six points from two matches after making a 2-0 two -e -two win over Bhutan, which have already been eliminated from the meet. Despite the defeat, Pakistan also remained in the race for the semi-final with three points from to end the bulletin, I recap the book. B. Oster in use of electricity urges Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina inaugurating National Power and Energy Week 2018. Collection of secret reports of Pakistan's security intelligence and father of the nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, to be published tomorrow. Communal polarization underway in name of national unity, leaving Awami League aside, alleges Awami League General Secretary Obadul Qadir. <music> Literacy rate of country rises to 72.9%, primary and mass education minister tells news conference. <music> Suicide attacks on a sports club killed 20 in Afghan capital Kabul. And in South Football, Bangladesh beat Pakistan by solitary goal. And that's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for staying with us and we invite you to watch our 11.30 Bangla News. Until then, Khuda Hafiz. Khuda Hafiz.